It's 2010. The Xbox 360 is shining bright. So yeah, you're gay. Rumours of the Xbox 720 are circling. And five-year-old me has just stumbled across the most beautiful thing on Earth. Halo Reach. Masked super soldiers battling against gigantic aliens. I thought the concept of Halo was the coolest thing other than sliced bread, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Otto Frederick Rollwetter. Fast forward to 2014. I've reached Master Prestige for the 100th time on Black Ops 2. Halo 4 Cortana has confirmed my sexuality. And the next generation of consoles were here, along with my personal favourite game of all time. Mask soldiers, big aliens, I'm sensing a pattern here. 2017, Destiny 2. Actually, wait, no, <laughs> never mind. Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. Hold on, wait, this one has pretend. 2021, Halo Infinite. Yeah! 2024. Yeah, but... Ten years. It took an entire decade to get this feeling back. There is one main reason why Helldivers brings back that classic gaming feeling, but I'll get to that later in the video. Welcome back to another episode of Is that an alien galactic war in your pants, or are you just excited to see me? The answer will blow you away. <laughs> No, seriously, that dumbass over there just threw an airstrike directly at us. Ah, shit. Now I need reinforcements. If you've been living with the bugs themselves, bro, move. Bruh, chill. And don't know what this game is all about, let me quickly fill you in. Pause. Helldivers 2 is a four player co op PvE extraction shooter where you get to experience the daily commute to work through the average American's eyes. Or I can only assume. You see, I'm not exactly sure if America is oh. real. What's this? That would be Asia. But there is one thing I know for certain I'm just doing my part for freedom. <laughs> <laughs> it's, mo <laughs> it's mowing down the Sicilian. Oh my! <laughs> this looks fun, right? <laughs> this is war. Look at the movement on me. Oh! And these enemies are ruthless. The bitch slap. These robots will pull your pants down and go straight for the Forbidden Canyon. The campaign of this game is every single player working together to slowly liberate the planets from many different enemy types. And you'd think since we are currently liberating these planets from the Terminids, what is that? And the automatons. What? Help me. <laughs> that they would be the biggest threats to humanity, but you see, the biggest threat to humanity is you and your teammates. Oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> and that is what makes the gameplay so damn fun. What the? There is only one game in history that has achieved perfect gameplay. Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. <laughs> Yeah, right. That Willy Wonka exhibit wasn't the biggest scam in recent times, but at least they knew how to cook up something addictive. A game, in my personal opinion, is nothing without immersion. Sitting inside your Minecraft home as the rain pours outside. Immersion! Watching your horse's balls shrink as it enters cold water in Red Dead. Immersion! My parents think I'm a disappoint. No, wait, no, wrong note. So Kai, how is your relationship with your parents? Chanting Rocket Stone in Deep Rock Galactic! Immersion! I'm sending you to a mental hospital. Yeah, that's fair, I guess. Four people sitting in a corner with shots flying straight through each other isn't immersion. That's just four loners at lunchtime. Helldivers brings every feature from all these brilliant games into one and injects an incredible amount of life into the co-op PvE experience. Well, every feature except the horse balls one, unless this is a metaphor for the old willy snip. You're doing the stanky leg. Running through the rain in a forest lit by the green moon orbiting the planet or dodging the automaton's bullets through the dark tree line. Bombs dropping down onto the enemy as you listen to your injured teammates scream in agony. Helldivers embraces the idea of an immersive co-op shooter. You're not just playing with other people, you are fighting this war alongside others, struggling to protect your homeland. Just gunk in my boots. 
They make this abundantly clear by having special weapons that will only ever be shot once if you don't have a teammate on your side refilling your ammo. Or how some supply bunkers require two people to be holding down a button each to open the door. Which is basically the game shoving the question in your face, you're not alone in this war, so why are you fighting alone? Another standalone feature that greatly complements the immersive feeling is friendly fire. Are you serious? As I said, the biggest threat isn't the enemies, it's where you and your team decide to throw your explosives and land after respawning. Friendly fire enhances two aspects oh. of gameplay, funny moments and strategy. The funny moments thing because pushing someone under their support package at the last second will never not be funny, and needing to think of different strategies because mindlessly throwing that airstrike into the horde your buddy is currently getting ass blasted by will result in a death. And eating through your limited amount of reinforcements isn't the greatest idea, especially in higher difficulties. There is no per player difficulty scaling in this game, meaning if you decide to play solo on Helldive difficulty, it'll immediately transform your strong independent head ass into a mum, dad, can I please move back in with you until I'm 50? Head ass. I graduated high school, you know, this vocabulary doesn't grow on trees. And neither do handouts! Because see these guys, if your plan is to shoot them with a regular weapon, ask yourself, how far would you get with a wet napkin against Prime Mike Tyson? Ow! Thankfully, drop-in, drop-out co-op is this game's sliced bread and butter. Meaning, you can start a new lobby and within a minute have three other people ready to go. Unless you're trying to match make in the highest difficulty against the robots because ha! <laughs> Nobody is playing that. My great uncle many years ago would tell my family about how his job growing up was ripping goats balls out with his teeth. I'm not sure how valid those stories were, but I'd rather be doing that than versing high difficulty automatons because they make you feel like the goat. And I'm not talking greatest of all time. Mission objectives are pretty basic. The coolest one is definitely launching the nuke, but the, fu the funniest by far is the civilian rescue missions because you can protect them. You lose requisition every time you do this, but if a movie ticket costs 20 bucks, what's 50? Am I right? <coughs> and I wash your eyes as we dolphin down to Malibu so we could be free Now you're down on your knees while I Watch you plead. Why would you end this with me? You gave your life for democracy. So was it worth it? Wasted our stratagems, and now I'm abandoned in the creek with. Joel? Who the fuck? If you think your job is cool, respectfully, it sucks. Because Joel is the GAME MASTER. Hide your loved ones because Joel will take them with the snap of a finger. Big purple dude. He wakes up in the middle of the night to give the automatons reinforcements. So while this game doesn't specifically have a dedicated campaign to play, the gameplay in itself is the story. Like how the fall of Malevolent Creek has become the first major arc in the Helldivers 2 story. And because they have this system in place where the community is responsible for developing the story by how they respond to the war in real time. Not only does it offer great replay value heading forward as the players will constantly be wondering what's going to happen next, it also allows for the players to fully immerse themselves in their story which is why the community is so brilliant. Trees and this, trees and that, <laughs> these videos are most likely to reason I'm still single. <laughs> I will forever appreciate games where the community is encouraged to fully immerse themselves. We run. Ah! <laughs> Encouraging cooperative play and fun over competitiveness and meta. They literally locked the mech's release behind the liberation of a planet. Having events like this brings the community together to achieve one goal. Ah! And imagine all the story possibilities this brings to the game. Let's say, hypothetically, at some point in the future as we are about to win the war, the final planet mere minutes away from liberation. And while liberating these planets, we've discovered the mechs were the key to defeating these enemies. But suddenly, the automatons have launched a counter-attack on Earth. Oh, 
And what's that? The mech production is also seized, bitch. So now the players have to quickly spread across the galaxy, some saving Earth so we don't lose the war, more at the mech production planet to get them back up and running, and the rest still on the final planet trying to slow down the automaton's counterattack before they reach our home planet. I don't know if anyone else is the same, but Star Wars The Clone Wars was my childhood. I literally feel like I'm playing through my own Clone War, and I think I find my own immersion in that idea of a Clone War, because from the very beginning, the tutorial of this game, you are explicitly shown as these expendable soldiers who are supposed to die in this war, which was how the clones saw themselves during the show. It's exactly how in the Deep Rock Galactic tutorial, Mission Control says, It was a pleasure meeting you. Hope you'll get an honourable death. Both of these games do a tremendous job in world building and showing you your role in this universe, rather than outright telling you. And that is the reason why I think Helldivers 2 brought back the classic gaming feeling. These people do not care about you. You cool down a turret, that some bitch will mow you down faster than you can say work health and safety lawsuit. Being an expendable soldier creates one thing, the need to work together with countless other people to make some sort of minor impact. I'm sick of every game coming out as live service when in reality it's just live scams. But this, man. Arrowhead, I applaud you. Of course, you still have the specimens who complain about their precious meta in a PvE game. I'm not touching the game until they fix the nerf. You're versing literal lines of code, you twat. Go outside. No. Anyways, this game didn't need a marketing budget because much like the story, the players have done it for them. I love seeing clips posted from other people's perspectives on this war. No, it's not your fault. What the fuck? You speak English? Of course I do. You've spoke English the whole time I've been here. You're afraid. If you look into the deeper lore of this game, it actually is understandable why we should feel bad about wiping out Don't you dare sympathize with the enemy soldier that is treason, punishable by microtransactions. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! Oh, why does a full price game have microtransactions? It's just more pay to win garbage. SILENCE! They say you need 10,000 hours to be a master of something, and well, I may not have 10,000 hours on Destiny, I would say I'm a master in microtransactions. I don't want to drag on too long about this topic because it's boring as balls, but I will say Helldivers 2 deserves to have microtransactions. This pay to win nonsense is just typical complaining for no reason. The super credits are earnable in game by finding containers like this. These credits are needed to buy the premium war bonds, which is sort of this game's version of a battle pass. But what you get inside these passes aren't even better than what's inside the free pass. It literally just gives you more options on what you can use. There is no FOMO either, every war bond added in the future will be available alongside all the older passes so you don't feel the need to spend a quick buck before Kevin Durant leaves the item shop. I don't see it as monetization, I see it as supporting a company that has already sold you an amazing game for almost half the price of the average AAA game releasing today. I mean, just look at Suicide Squad dude, how are there seasons in a story game? I actually give up. Would you give me money if I just shat all over my keyboard and called it art. Yes? Well, what a strange turn of events. Every day I wake up! <laughs> so, my opinion is clear. I think this game is an immersive masterpiece with a promising future ahead. But there is a good reason why I say mostly. It is such a goofy game. What the hell? From corpse launches. The hell? Oh! To watching your teammate walk on the same mine you did not even 30 seconds ago, and <laughs> this. Ah, oh, really? With the game so goofy and immersive, it covers every single point you could ever want in a game, so I don't see any world where this game dies in the next few months. We haven't even been introduced to the other enemy types yet. Vehicles are coming. I'm at the blow. <laughs> Tons of planets we still haven't explored. They've recently added environmental hazards like meteor showers and firestorms, so it makes it feel like you're playing that Roblox game. There are an infinite amount of directions they can go with this game and I can't wait to see what they do with it. So overall, great game, adding this to the favourites tab in my Steam library. If you smirked even the slightest bit throughout this video, comment the phrase, seriously another video, this is getting out of control. Also, we are almost at 1k subs already, what the poop happened? To celebrate, here is a special poem I've been saving for this occasion. I call it, Hidden Bear Trap in the Woods. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
<laughs> Anyways, man, remember to take Clyde's advice. Like and subscribe, losers. And as always, stay sweet.